And you can watch <coughs> the incredible cinematography of Frozen Planet on Wednesday at 9pm. That's on absolutely BBC amazing, World. that, yeah. right. Now, you've probably watched our next guest in either Blockbuster One Day in a uh, series um, one of Pete versus Life or British hit drama The Shadow Line. If for any reason you didn't, then you'll be able to miss him, or you, sorry, you won't be able to miss him playing Shakespeare, uh, himself in a new film, Anonymous. You are the famous William Shakespeare, whose labours I have so enjoyed. I'm at your service, sir. My expenses have enlarged, grandized. If your lordship does not agree to an increase in my fee, then I shall be forced to make certain facts public. Hey, have you any idea to whom you are speaking? Yes, I am addressing the writer of Hamlet. And of Juliet and her Romeo, am I not? Get out. Wait. How much? Four hundred pounds. A year. Questa voglio ammazzarlo subito, signore. No, pay him. Signore, pagalo. Oh, welcome once again. Something for the weekend. Rafe Spool. Nice to be here. Uh, anonymous. I went to see it this week, and I'm an honest guy, and it's brilliant. Well, thanks, I, mate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie. It's, it's a fantastic film. I sat and watched it, and what I loved about it, it's just so different to anything I've seen recently. It is. Uh, it's, it's an old-fashioned sort of film, you know, because it's, it, it's got a... It's a, the kind of film that doesn't really get made anymore because it's a big-budget period piece, which studios are quite hesitant to pay for these days. But someone, the director of it is Roland Emmerich, who's, who's known for directing things like... Independence Day in 2012, so it's quite a departure for him. So he's made lots of money in his films in the past, so the studios, as a sort of favour to him, said you can make your movie that you've been wanting to make for 20 years, and they paid for this big period piece. Well, it's worked, because it is brilliant. Good. Tell us what it's about. Without giving away too much, because I'm seeing it tomorrow morning. OK. <laughs> so, it's about who wrote Shakespeare's plays, I say. And there's lots of conspiracies floating around that this man from Stratford didn't write the plays. And this film centres on this theory that it was a guy called Edward de Vere who was the Earl of Oxford. And so I play William Shakespeare, but my William Shakespeare is William Fakespeare, <laughs> as it were, uh, because I didn't write the plays. I'm just an actor who got lucky uh, and ends up having this canon of work with his name on it, even though he didn't write it. If, if the story's not real, it's obviously a huge conspiracy theory, if it's not real, you get so engrossed in it watching it that you think, oh, it's real, it's real. And then when I finished, I was like, no, I don't want it to be real, because I like the idea of... Yeah, you like the idea of this guy writing one huge body of work. And I suppose that's the thing that I can't quite get my head round, is that one person could have written Julius Caesar and Macbeth and Midsummer Night's Dream. That's something that I've always struggled with. I, mean, I don't necessarily believe that this guy, Edward de Vere, wrote it, but it is a question worth asking. And if people come out of the film and have that reaction of wanting to find out more about it and want to Google Edward de Vere or Shakespeare yeah. and then go and watch the Shakespeare plays with a new set of eyes, then that's a positive people thing. People love conspiracy theories as well, don't they? they people love a it. conspiracy theory. And that's the thing about this film, is it's not dry, it's not intellectual, it's a cracking good story. You know, it's a sort of thriller, yes. really. Because I'm not really interested in being in films that are boring and, and, and dry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's fun and it rips along and it's engaging and it's for everyone. Yeah, and the other interesting thing about it is it's this, uh, you've shot a lot of it on CGI in front of green screen, yeah. haven't you? And, and you're talking about making period. Obviously, they were tough to do years ago because you had to create these huge sets. Now, obviously, you can create immense depth via... Yeah, exactly, and it is pretty weird doing green screen in period costume. It's one thing if you're in a sci-fi yeah. film, you can kind of get your head around it. But if you're dressed up as Shakespeare and everything's green around you, it's a bit weird. But, you know, that's the thing about this film, that's the merit of having someone like Roland Emmerich doing it, is that there's big aerial shots, chopper shots, even though helicopters weren't invented then, um, <laughs> of 17th century London, yeah. which hasn't really been seen before. Yeah, you know, because that, that thing with pieces, yeah. they're qu quite closed in and small, but this has got a big scope. It's huge. Yeah, it's Absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. When you watch it, you think, wow, look at yeah. this. Uh, yeah. uh, is, was it hard as an actor, though? Because obviously Shakespeare is, is your god as an actor. Is it hard to... to was it hard to say yes to this film because they're um, this conspiracy theory and you're basically belittling Shakespeare? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I just, I'm an actor. I want to do good parts. I'm yeah. not going to go on, no, no, I, oh, that's offensive to me and my fellow actors. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Where, yeah, where, <laughs> when do I start? But you, you do, you're doing the big screen stuff, but you also like doing the TV stuff because I watched yeah. the first of... Pete vs. Life on Friday, which yes, started. Yes, thanks. <laughs> I did, did my research. Very funny. It, well, it is funny, yeah, and I'm really proud of it, because I think it's a simple thing to say, but I think comedy's either funny or it's not. Yeah. And I think this is funny. 
um, and it's a gag a minute and it, rip, it rips along and it's not under any illusions that it's a comedy drama or has any pathos about it. It's just straight up comedy. It's funny. It's, quickly explain that we got a clip, but quickly explain what happens in it. The, what, so the idea is that I play a young sports writer called Pete Griffiths, who is a socially inept, awkward, all round loser. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they cast me. <laughs> um, and then uh, the conceit, the general conceit, is that he has two Sky Sports type football commentators who should be commentating on a Premiership game, but are commentating on the mundanities of his life. Okay, let's have a look. So, Chloe said you're back together. That's very... Um... Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you two hook up again? Um, well, we bumped into each other. An Eva Cassidy tribute concert? Bumped into it isn't totally accurate, is it, Terry? No, nah, he's been keeping an eye on her through Facebook for some months. Saw she was going to an Eva Cassidy tribute concert and engineered bumping into her. Yes, but on the downside, he did have to buy three Eva Cassidy albums. And on top of the scented candle, it's like a knife in the gut. <laughs> some of it is so cringy, though. I was just dying to go, oh, my gosh. Can you imagine having parents well, like that uh, or going through those situations? Bill was talking about earlier how... Um, British comedy travels, and I think one of the things that sort of defines British comedy is that we like to be embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? We like awkward situations because it sort of makes us feel better about ourselves. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> we get into awkward situations on a daily basis, so to see... Someone else in the worst situation... Yeah, it's it's funny and, and, yeah, comforting. Are you going to have to give up the TV stuff now? Because you're getting so many movies, aren't you? I don't want to. I, I, I'm not one of those actors who, who sort of thinks, right, I only want to do films now. I love doing that show, and I love doing telly, because lots of people watch it, you know, and I yeah. like watching telly, so I don't know why I'd stop doing it. Um, you're doing another film that I'm really excited about, uh, Prometheus. How did you say Prometheus. Prometheus? Prometheus, which is the new Ridley Scott one. Yeah. Which is, which is a prequel to Aliens. Yeah. A Alien, Alien yeah. which he directed the first Alien. Yeah, he directed the first Alien, and this is... I've been sent an email about what I'm allowed to say and I'm not allowed to say, and I haven't read the email. Oh, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, but it's out next June. It's out next June, and it is part of the Alien franchise. I know that. I'm in it. I'm like, <laughs> I know that. And Charlize Theron's in it, and Numi Rapace and Michael Vassbender, and I think fans of the franchise will love it. I love it. I love Alien. I love Aliens, Alien. I love the whole thing. Well, Alien's yeah. one of the best films ever yeah. made, oh, you yeah. know? And it's a, it's a real buzz to be in a spacesuit on an alien set with Ridley Scott coming and speaking to you. That must, that <laughs> you know must I mean? have been it's incredible. Like, like, that is Scott. incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. It, you know, that's why I wanted to be an actor, was to be in a spacesuit on an alien set. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. So it happened. Yeah, it was a dream. And have you seen a final version of it? No. I've seen nothing. No, they're really... They keep it all under closed wraps. Yeah, they keep it all sort of tight and don't let anyone see anything. And will it be no, as right. good as Alien? I hope so. Alien's one of the best films ever made, isn't yeah. it? So it, it's, a, it's a high... Mantle, high bar, but you know this is the third sci-fi film that Ridley Scott's ever directed. The first being first two, Alien and Blade Runner. <laughs> so <laughs> wow. hopefully it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. But it'll probably, knowing me, it'll probably be terrible. It'll probably be the worst one that no. he's ever made. <laughs> you know, I've been all over the internet um, looking for trailers, and, and there's nothing out there really, is there? There's a few stills. Um, there's a few, um, yeah. There's a few bits and pieces, but they want to keep it secret. You know, they're very protective of it. It's, it's going to be absolutely huge, this one, isn't it? I hope so. <laughs> OK. All right, brilliant. Uh, Rafe uh, is cooking, and uh, he's, you're cooking our and finally dish with Simon.